probes are here, they're, they're for high line controls, they're easy to integrate and they'll increase the productivity on your machine and save you plenty of production time. So I'm here with Steve Wright from Heidenhain uh, at YMT Technologies in Yeovil. Now, we're going to talk about three things in this interview. The first one um, is about probes and why you should use them and how they work. The second is um, the longevity of, of Heidenhain in this marketplace, 35 years supplying these types of products. Um, and the third thing is the differences between the probes that we're actually looking and seeing in action here uh, compared to some of the others on the market. So Steve, let's let's start with the long, you know, let's start with the history of the company. I mean, yep. 35 years doing probes. We have, yeah, we've been manufacturing probes for over 35 years and it's said to be one of the uh, best kept secrets really of the machine tool industry. Uh, there's still a lot of people out there that are unaware that we actually manufacture the probe systems. Okay, now there's two of them that we're going to talk about in yep. this particular interview, mm -hmm. both in action on yes. this YCM machine are, behind yeah. us. Mm -hmm. um, Firstly, how do probes work and, and, and what are they about? Yeah, probes basically are a very, very accurate switch. And when the probe actually triggers on the workpiece or on the tool, it then uh, captures the actual axis position and that is sent back to the control. And then we use that position to actually align the workpiece in the, in the machine, measure the workpiece or measure the geometry of the tools. Okay, and why should people use them? You should use them because basically they're going to increase the productivity and efficiency of the machine. They reduce sort of manual setup times uh, using the spindle probe to set up the component inside the machine. And for the tooling, you can measure your tools inside the machine rather than using a presetter outside and manually having to enter the data onto the control. Secondly, with, with the inspection probe in the spindle, you can actually inspect the component inside the machine, which saves having to remove the part from the machine taking it to an inspection department, checking it, and then having the problem of reloading and reworking the part inside the machine. Okay, now we've got two probes that we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. here. You mentioned them, the workpiece and mm -hmm. the tool setting yep. probe. They are here on the table as well as in action mm -hmm. behind us on the machine. Let's start with your tool setting probe here. Can you talk us through this unit? Yeah, this is our TT War 60 tool probe for monitoring, measuring, and checking your tooling in terms of tool length and tool radius. Um, it's a wireless system that talks remotely to an, an infrared or radio transmitter in the corner of the machine. Okay, now how do you actually, tell us the practicalities, how do you get it onto the machine? How do you set it up? Yeah, it's simply mounted onto the machine, onto the machine table on a, on a mounting base. There's a couple of options for that. And we also do a magnetic version, so it's easily removable from the machine. So you position it wherever you feel you yes. should on the corner of the table. Uh -huh. And then how do, you, how do you find out where its position is? For we can actually use an inbuilt probing cycle that will actually locate the probe and do a calibration cycle from there. And do you ever have to keep going back to recalibrate it to check where it is during the machine's operating times? Not normally, no, unless there's any unexpected changes in temperature in the room itself or if the probe is physically moved, if it's physically taken off the table and replaced, obviously you'd recalibrate the system Okay, again. so this unit has um, this, this radio gear on mm. it, essentially, yep. doesn't it? That's where the communication happens. Mm -hmm. But there is also another option, the one next to it. Could you point at this and tell us what the differences are with that unit? Yep. Yeah, this is what we call the TT160. Exactly the same functionality as the wireless version, but it has a, a cable outlet. So this is physically hardwired to the machine. So you'd have a flying lead from the probe up to the machine cabinet, out to the elect uh, electrical cabinet. And then what about what we have here then, Steve? Okay, this one here is the TS460. Now this is the spindle probe for setting up your components inside the machine and then doing the inspection of the components after cutting. Again, this is a wireless version of the probe that talks uh, either by infrared or radio transmission back to a receiver. Okay, now there's two areas I really want to explore on this, mm -hmm. which, are, which are pretty distinctively unique to yep to yourselves here at Heidenhain. Can you explain for our viewers what those, those are? Yeah, certainly, yeah. Uh, the first one is the collision protection ring here at the base of the probe. This actually acts as a second defense to protect the probe body itself. So if you had an unexpected contact between the probe body and the fixture or, or the workpiece, the probe body would actually deflect and protect the electronics and the mechanical working of the probe. Okay, that's an interesting yeah. one. What about the second one, the, uh, yeah. the air and the cooler? The second function is we actually have three outlets going through the probe where we can pass either compressed air or coolant through there. And the reason we would do that is to clean off any swarf off the workpiece prior to doing any probing measurements. Okay, how do they work, all work in conjunction with your, 
um, the, the radio gear that you've got here. Could okay. you just tell us about that? Yes, yeah, certainly, yeah. We use this, this is our main receiver. This is an SE660, uh, and it's a hybrid receiver. And what we mean by that, it's, it's capable of transmitting in either infrared or radio transmission. And that one receiver works on both probe systems, both on the spindle probe and on the tool probe. Primarily, the radio transmission is more for large machines, or if you've got instances where fixtures or the workpiece are going to block the line of sight between the receiver and the probe system. Now, you need one unit to drive both then, is mm -hmm. that right? That's correct, yes. So are we suggesting then, Steve, if, if, if we bought, let's say, the workpiece probe to start with, mm -hmm. with the receiver, mm -hmm. if you then wanted to opt for the, um, the tool setting option, you don't need to buy another receiver, you get all wires That's right, one. yeah, you can just add it to the existing system. Now, here we're here at YMT, we're looking at a YCM machine with both of these in action. Mm -hmm. I asked you how you set up the tool setting probe. Mm -hmm. How do you go about setting up the workpiece probe and the workpiece initially in the machine so that this can be used? Okay. Yeah, the spindle probe itself is supplied with a tool holder on the back, which again comes from Hyde 9. You load that simply into the spindle, you align the stylus to the centre line of the spindle, and then you run a calibration routine in a ring gauge. This sets up the, any offsets in the stylus itself, and then, yeah, you're ready to go. What's the advantage to, to, to your product being able to work with your control as well? Because it's clear to see here, we've yep. got a machining centre with a Hyde & Hain, uh, Hain software on it, and a Heidenheim product, the two are bound to work yeah. seamlessly, aren't they? Yeah, for actual installation and integration, it's basically plug and play. Uh, it's been made that way, yeah. And with probing, accuracy is massively important. Yeah, just to go back and re-mention about the collision protection ring that we can have fitted to the spindle probe, that actually acts as a thermo decoupling device. So any heat that is generated in the spindle of the machine can't be transferred through to the probe and it introduce any probing inaccuracies because of thermal growth. Okay, finally, why should people go with probing, Dan? There'll be plenty of companies out there that do use probes, yep. but lots that don't. Mm -hmm. I mentioned at the start of this, they can save hours and hours of time, but it's not just about time, is mm -hmm. it? No, the other thing is the accuracy of our probe systems. Uh, when we look at the tool probe, the TT system, we have an accuracy of plus or minus 15 microns and a probing repeatability of uh, three, less than one micron at three meters per minute. And what will, this, what will this give to users though, Steve, is my final, what I really want to get out here. By incorporating some of the technologies we're talking about here, what's it going to give their machine shop? The message is we have our own probes. They're easy to integrate on high nine controls. The accuracy is there, which will save you time in your machine production. Uh, and everything is automated inside the machine, saving you plenty of time.